Today, we're going to be continuing our series of books that influenced me on my physician entrepreneur journey. This book came out in 2008, and what it does is it offers practical advice from scaling businesses from zero to $100 million. Yes, that's $100 million. It presents a framework of success, and it does so by giving you the analogy of how we grow up as humans from infancy, childhood, adolescence to maturity. And these are what they consider the four stages of any successful business. Uh, you may not have heard of this book before, but it made a big impact on my career. So today, we're going to cover the book Ready, Fire, Aim, Zero to 100 Million in No Time Flat by Michael Masterson on this episode of Bootstrap MD. Hey guys, this is Dr. Mike Wooming. Welcome to another edition of Bootstrap MD, the podcast for healthcare and physician entrepreneurs. We've been covering a series of books that had influenced me early in my career, and I still periodically refer to them these days, and I think they're still as relevant as they were back then. So the book that I'm going to be covering today is called Ready, Fire, Aim, Zero to $100 Million Dollars in no time flat. Now, this book came out in 2008 by the author Michael Masterson, which incidentally is actually a pseudonym for a gentleman named of Mark Ford. So who is Mark Ford, Michael Matheson, Masterson? Uh, he's had extensive experience as an entrepreneur. Um, his first business was in at the age of 11, and he launched different successful ventures. I first heard about him because I used to subscribe to his newsletter which was called Early to Rise, uh, and can, I think it's still published today on earlytorise.com. Uh, it was a book on just productivity and motivation and business advice. Um, that book uh, covered, you know, from health, wealth, wisdom. It developed into $20 million a business, and then he, then he took his talents to Agora Publishing, which is a big... Um, publishing company and it talks about uh, investing and real estate, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, and, you know, very successful company specializing in these, uh, creating information products for these uh, areas. So Ready, Fire, Aim uh, by Michael Masterson. Um, the best way that I can describe it is, you know, obviously it takes off from the Ready, Aim, Fire. That if you shot a gun or, you know, had a bow and arrow, that's usually what we refer to it. But the idea is that you launch, you launch it out, and then, then you do tweaks to it, to the business over time to make it more successful. Um, as I mentioned at the intro, it talks about the different stages of a business, and that's what he talks about in the book, and he organizes it through different revenue milestones. So from zero, and then it goes to, $1 million in revenue, which that part, as you're having your startup, you should be focusing on sales and customer acquisition. From 1 million to 10 million, you should transition from being a startup to now growth phase. 10 million to 50 million is where you should scale operations and expand your market share. Then if you are lucky enough to get a 50 million to $100 million plus, that's when you're establishing a very strong market position in your industry. A big topic that he discusses in the book is about sales and that our primary focus shouldn't be on creating the best logo. It should be focusing on getting that sales. Feels business owners should spend at least 80% of the time focusing on selling. It's critical to figure out how to effectively sell products and services in your business so you can reach that mass, critical mass of customers before you scale even further. Now, since the book has come out, you know, even at recent conferences, I still hear about the book talked about, even though it's probably not as well known as some of the books we often think about in entrepreneurship, such as Think and Go Rich and As a Man Thinketh. Um, but, you know, it's highly praised among entrepreneurial circles, and it's frequently recommended as a resource when you're growing your business. Um, and I enjoyed it because it gives you really straightforward, actionable advice that covers everything. So what I'm going to cover on this episode, how it can apply to you as physician entrepreneurs. And I jotted down some key principles uh, that I got from the book and uh, well, let's cover it now. So an important principle that I got from the book is that you need to start small, think big. So specifically, what do you mean by that? 
needs to be focusing on once you're launching your product, you should have an MVP, also known as a minimum viable product. We hear that a lot about that in software. It's like you just need enough to get it out. So you've probably heard of software. They get it out into the masses so they can uh, run it. I mean, there's no software out there that just has a 1.0 version, right? 1.0, 1.1. They continually improve it over time, getting feedback uh, from their customers. And this is what you should be focusing on uh, when you're getting out your product or service that you want to launch. Um, while t you test it, while you're keeping an eye on future expansion. So how can this apply to physician entrepreneurs? Let's say you're launching uh, a practice and maybe you're going to be doing uh, a telehealth and maybe you're going to just be focusing on chronic conditions. Maybe you're just focusing on type two diabetes but you're doing so to like really get good at doing that. So maybe later on you have an eye on like helping all chronic conditions for that, for that uh, group that you're, um, um, you shouldn't be putting all your eggs in one basket and say, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to service all, but instead, you know, you know, unless you, unless you have unlimited resources, you don't want to get stretched too thin. So you want to focus on that specific area, do well in that, and then move on. So this is almost like a shoot, shoot from the hip approach that you should, instead of just thriving, or instead of just striving for perfection, you should just get it out, see what the market says of the product, and then quickly tweak it and start generating revenue. Getting it out too quickly, and this is an important thing, and this is where I often see is, you got to start asking for sales, right? If you say, I'm going to just give it out for free, that is going to be worth buying, right? Everybody wants stuff for free, but it's the importance of actually receiving money so then you can have the resources to expand your business. This is what he feels will lead to long-term growth and success. Now, where businesses often fail is they strive for perfection at the beginning and then they never get started. Again, think of the title, ready, fire, aim. So by getting your product out there, you're getting some validation like, hey, people are actually wanting this and they know because they're actually giving you money for it. So then you know that this is the right place that you can go to. You can get your market viability. Um, so deliver your focus should be on getting your product or service out there that people will buy it, they'll like it, and they'll recommend it to others. Perfection comes is after they've paid you and then you can continue receiving feedback. As a doctor, I wasn't used to asking for help, especially when it came to subjects outside of medicine. But then I found physiciancoaches.com. In an instant, I found hundreds of experts to help me in all aspects of life, on areas I was afraid to ask, dealing with burnout, starting a side gig, money management, even help with my marriage. And the best part? Nearly all experts are physicians themselves. After reading their profile and a quick chat, I knew I found the right mentor for me. At physiciancoaches.com, help from professional colleagues is just a click away. Now, another important principle, in fact, it covers a lot about the book, is selling and having worked with many doctors we're not used to selling even though we sell every day we sell when we want to convince someone to fill this prescription for their medical condition where we sell when we urge them to lose weight and start exercising to improve their health so we sell we we are persuaders but i know Many uh, entrepreneurs are very reluctant to selling you. You feel uncomfortable about it, but that's the only way that you're going to know to make sure that your product or service is validated. And, he's, and in the book, Michael Masterson says that nothing really happens until a sales is made. Just because people are want your free stuff doesn't mean they're actually going to buy from you. Revenue is the lifeblood of any business. So, um, Successful businesses focus on effective selling, marketing, and advertising. And you need to understand the basics of selling so you can get guaranteed sales. And give the book covers some practical advice on effective selling. Um, 
So when you're launching your new business, where they say entrepreneurs make a mistake is they focus on secondary tasks, such as make sure your logo is, is perfect or making sure the furniture is has the same feng shui as as on patients you want to attract for your for for your business those are all nice but at the end selling is going to be the one that's going to keep your business keep the lights on on your business uh so sell as soon as possible even if the product isn't perfect perfect and avoid wasting time doing secondary tasks that gets to my next principle is abt always be testing so you got your product out there People are buying it, but now you want to get their feedback. And so it's important to always be testing to increase the chances of success in your business. The product just has to be good enough. It doesn't have to be great, but by getting it out to the market quickly, this is where you're going to see if your product is actually going to be a winner for you. Uh, you're going to get valuable in input from your early adopters. Um, so getting the product and service out there, getting that validation, getting great feedback. So what do I mean by that? So let's say you're gonna create a course to help physicians who are burnt out, okay? But you don't know if your course is great. And I, I see so many people spend so much time spending months, maybe even years trying to create the perfect product. You can create a product just by um, saying, I'm going to have a series of four webinars and doing it live over those four weeks. And how your product is going to get better is each week or at the end of each, at the end of the course, you're going to ask them like, what did you like? What did you didn't like? Were there some topics that we covered too much? Were there topics that were missed that you'd like to see? That's going to be crucial because each iteration of your product is going to, or your course is going to get better and better and better. So always be testing is a fundamental aspect of any business for guaranteed success. Another important aspect of business that I liked is innovation versus just copying or modeling. And I think modeling is actually a better word. Sure, you can come up with the, the first Uber. Uh, you know, obviously that was a business that disrupted an entire industry or industries. You could create PayPal, another new payment method that was never seen before. However, consumers are more interested in adapting or having their own twist on existing products than completely new ones. I can't even imagine, you know, deciding to, you know, if you were the, like the first user of, of Uber and say, you know, instead of taking a taxi, I'm just gonna get in a stranger's car. That can be very difficult. And uh, if you know anything like that, it takes time to create change in, in humans, right? It's what consumers are much more interested in are adaptions of existing product. So what is what are things that are out there already that could be better? For example, Facebook, you know, we've, we all use it, but before then there was a social media platform called Friendster. They kind of had the same principles, but Facebook saw what they liked and didn't like about Friendster and made it better. And nobody remembers what, who Friendster was. So you don't always have to be first mover. You can just be the one who does it better. And there are products out there today that, and, and businesses that are out there today that have, um, this perfected it. Starbucks wasn't the first coffee shop, coffee shop, but they perfected it over time. They've been selling coffee what for decades, hundreds of years. We've been selling it. They just improved it over time, and that adds to my next indicator is that people like excitement. And so, in the book, it covers about how excitement about an idea can indicate its potential for success. You know, are they people who, let's say, you're having a course out there are they talking about it are they going on social media um ideas that excite higher ex excite people will have an increased chance of success have you told this this idea to um uh, better than a friend or family because they'll tell you what they want to hear to strangers or people you don't know and see what they think about it so trust your intuition you know based on your own experiences when you're launching a product 
um, and trying to get as much feedback as you can. And that leads to a, a successful endeavor. Brainstorm multiple options before deciding to um, go with the one that, that, that's best. But just remember, you can always tweak it. We want to make sure that the product or service is getting out to the masses. So the antithesis is trying to avoid boring ideas. Boring ideas are likely to underperform. You know, I would rather have, when I started my companies, I would rather have, you know, the low hanging fruit that there was already a chance of, there's already examples of success already, and then have my twist on it to see what I can do to make it better. Then again, going into an entirely new uh, industry or a new product in an in industry um, that I really don't know if it's going to succeed or not. Another important principle I learned from the book is the importance of acting swiftly. What's great when you have when you're lean, when you've got a small team, or even maybe yourself, is that you can act swiftly. You don't have to rely on big boards or, or a, you know, a number of of yes men to, to to move fast on a product or service. And Michael Masterson, the author of the book, would say that actually being faster is probably better than actually trying to be perfect. Strategic thinking and practical planning are essential, but it must be balanced by having swift execution. When you act swiftly in business, you know, speed uh, is the is the one of the major factors for a success of a business. Being bold um, and, and and being fast encourages and exhilarates and powers and it builds morale within a group. Uh, by moving fast, you're gonna attract attention admiration and help in selling products whether you love them or hate them it sounds like elon musk you know he goes quickly when he when he finds something that he, he wants it generates excitement and more often than not he's successful in his endeavors of course you need to be prudent of course you make sure you have the resources for this um so you so you can grow but at the end Avoid spending all your time just on, you know, taking incremental steps. Um, and that swiftness is going to really help you out and really give you the momentum to have a successful company. Another important aspect of a business, and it's probably, um, it's probably not rocket science to do this. When you're, when you're launching your business, you need to have a, a, great team around you. A strong team is the backbone of any successful enterprise. Uh, sure, you're going to be lean, but just like for, you know, if you're opening a practice, you want to make sure it's not just you, but you've got a team of nurses, uh, physician's assistants, perhaps in your business dietitians, front desk people, customer support, managers, medical assistants. Those are all part of your team. Right. And they want to be diversified. They want to have different skills and be able to, you know, I, I enjoy where everyone ha has input and they encourage that in the book, especially when you're coming up with their idea, you know, get different experiences. Everybody has different um, travel, different, uh, you know, roads in, in, in their life. And what they've learned can help you with brainstorming, uh, generating multiple ideas and then you can then narrow them down and then move forward with things that the, the group feels is the most viable, or at least in your leadership team is the most viable. I enjoy have you know, I enjoy when I, I hire, you know, I think talent is, you can't really can't put a price on it. And to have talented individuals, in, in, you know, in the end of businesses is, is, is just a consortium of talented people and let them grow, let them be nurtured, let them uh, be good at what they're good. If they're one is good at get customer support, you know, make them accountable for that particular area and tackle problems head on. Are, are, are these important things that you need to have? Make sure you scale smartly, put systems in place, so, you know, automated systems. Are there areas in your business, perhaps you could use artificial intelligence to help defray costs. Um, so they're all, all these different things, of course, you need to think about. Business isn't easy, but it's a series of systems. It's a series of processes. It's a series 
of people that will get your business to move forward. You want to hire professionals. You want to hire stars, superstars in your party to manage and elevate your business. The book concludes about another important aspect that I think you have, need to have is just enjoying the journey. I work many entrepreneurs. We work, you know, the, the saying goes, we work 80 hours a week, so we don't have to work 40 hours a week. And that can be, that is so I love that that title because it's so it's hard work, but it's it's to understand that it is a journey. I've talked about how a business you should treat it as as a game. Don't get too serious in it, but you know that's why I love being in businesses because I just love the you know what's next, what what are the opportunities that are out there. Make sure that you've got work life balance. You don't let it consume you. You know what are you doing all of this for? And always have that in the back of your mind. Um, before entering this journey. And again, I love having businesses that can create products and services that can help mankind and womankind uh, and help society overall. So what are those ideas? If you have those ideas uh, in your head, ideas are great, but at the end, it's the implementation that is, is where you're at going to shine. So to sum up, Ready, Fire, Aim is a great book that I encourage you to look at. It's been out there for a while. As I mentioned, it changed my career, and I think it's still as useful as it was back then. So I hope you like the podcast. Just remember, guys, as I just mentioned, entrepreneurship is a journey. You're going to have your ups. You're going to have your downs. Do something simple each day to get you closer to your goals and keep moving forward.